Hello, hello everyone. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Paddy Murphy, and joining me there is Dan, and there is Martin. Hello, lads. How are you? Doing? Hello, everyone. What a weekend of football, huh? Yeah, it's a bit mental. Yeah. It's a bit mental, especially for you. Come on, let's start with West Ham, man. What the hell is going on? I don't know. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I weren't involved in any of it, but uh, uh-huh. it was crazy. And this was uh, it was billed as a Category A game in terms of safety, so there were no police inside the ground. Um, it, I, I don't understand it because they knew that there was going to be a protest before the game anyway, so I don't know why there was no police about, but... Uh, yeah, it went a bit mental. Yeah, I thought um, Sullivan bought off the protesters by, you know, taking them around his house for a pint or something. Yeah, no, they did, and then there was there's still there was still a load that that went ahead with it and did. I mean, I didn't see it, but they, I think there was a few couple of hundred that still did a little bit of a march or something. Um, and then yeah, it all got out of hand as soon as we went one nil down. Really, in the second half, first half was fine. Yeah, nice, enjoyable atmosphere, and then. As soon as we conceded, it, everything turned. Someone ran on the pitch. Obviously, Mark Noble tackled him. And there was about five separate instances where people run on the pitch, which is pretty crazy. And then a, about 500 people moaning at the chairman in the stands. So. And apparently apparently, uh, a two-pound coin uh, got thrown at Sullivan. Um, um, yeah, go on. Here comes a joke. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you pick one. Yeah, it, it came 50p in three, three, six months <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been through all this. I've done this all before with these exact same owners. Yeah. Um, so it only got, you guys lightly, yeah, doesn't it? Um, we played Blackburn last game of the season. We needed to win to stay up, and we needed other teams to lose. Yeah. We won four one, but the other teams didn't lose, did. and it went off. It proper went off. Both crossbars got snapped. Um. <laughs> There was like a massive pitch invasion. There was like people doing the same thing as at, uh, um, at the London Stadium, you know, like waving their fists in the general direction of uh, Sullivan mm-hmm. and Gold. I remember being at the pub after the game and someone, you, you know those um, those fluffy mics they put by the side of the pitch? Yeah. Someone yeah. had nicked one and got it in the pub. <laughs> the best bit was, the best bit was, Sky knew he'd nicked it because he'd seen it on the CCTV and it just said, look, lads, give it us back and we won't say anything. And they didn't, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we all had our taken with it, and then we just give it them back. So you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, luck- luckily today, Jamie Carragher has deflected um, any sort of incident from us onto him now. So that's good news. Yeah, well, he spit at someone, spit at someone's car or something. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the video. It's spat outrageous. It, yeah. it, I, I think the people who uh, filmed him, you know, go, like goading him, you know, you can't film um, Jamie Carragher like goading him and drive a car down the motorway. I hope that yeah. guy gets done as well. To be honest, I have no problem with people spitting at uh, paparazzis. No problem at all. I think it should be well, done more. He, he was a kid. Yeah, well, yeah, fine. He, yeah, he was a parent, a 14 year old girl in the, dro- in the passenger seat, and Jamie Carragher's all over it. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. you, if you follow me and take my photograph, then I'm, I'm not really responsible for what, what happens. It's it's disgusting, and in fairness, Carragher should have got out of the car and just pummeled him. That's how I feel. And uh, I, I I would like to try that. I would probably I couldn't fight my way out of a fruit fight, to be totally honest. But you know, I'd, I'd give it a lash, <laughs> defending my honour. Um, no, but here, um, just the last thing on West Ham, because um, Dan, mm-hmm. obviously, you you know how this ends badly, <laughs> or, or or at least another owner needs to come in. Um, but I suppose, Martin, the, the, the lads there at West Ham, they're not going to want to give up on West Ham because it's a, it's a golden goose, isn't it? Yeah, of course they're not. They're not, they're not walking away. That's the problem like, with, the, with this minority of fans that, that want to have a go at the board. They're not going to force them out. They're, they're, they're here to stay. They're not going anywhere. So we need to, we need to put up with it and, and support the team. Because that's what the problem was at the weekend. You know, all that stuff happened at 1-0. And then a minute later, we went 2-0 down because of what started happening. I mean, vent your frustrations after the game. Wait till the game's over because we were in control until we conceded the first goal. Um, it could have been worse. Uh, uh, yeah. Your chairman could have walked on the pitch with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Greece, yeah. Yeah, the whole league's been suspended. Ooh, um, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I've got a friend who's an Ajax fan, and he reckons that it's all a plot to stop Ajax getting in the Champions League because they'll be in, they're they're in danger of being champions this year. 
And oh, right. Panathinaikos Castle are in with like these Russian oligarchs. So, Funny. yeah. Don't yeah. bet on Greek football, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and in France as well, the Lille game was pretty crazy as well. There's a pitch invasion in that game. Mm. Um, it's the most on. insane thing that happened this weekend, we scored a goal. <laughs> scored two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still lost. <laughs> Come on, we scored two goals. It's yeah. a massive step up for us, this is. That's mad. Mad. That's are you going down, Dan, or are you getting relegated this season then? Um, you know what? If every other team around us wasn't so crap, I would have thought so. But yeah. um, big week. Um, it's a big week for Barnsley. They play twice before we play on Saturday. They play tomorrow night. They play on Friday. If they yeah. don't pick up points in either of those games, and Norwich are a bit shaky, so I'm not sure it's going to be the case. But if, if they fail, then we're back. We're in. You know, we're back in. The problem is, is that um, the change in manager, I think, has helped. You can see that we're a more attacking side now. Players got a bit more confidence, but you know, uh, we played a Cardiff side that, like, at half time was so far ahead of us. They just took the foot off the gas. Mm. We almost scored and went, "Yeah, that'll do." <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the, and, and the, 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 back to the Premier League yeah. for a second, and, and that really stood out. Obviously, obviously, uh, Liverpool lost to Man United. I thought I was saying to you on on Thursday, Martin, that I thought mm. Newcastle's match with Southampton was going to be interesting. They ended up winning, winning three 0 But on, I suppose Liverpool and Man, Man United was the biggest, uh, the biggest match. So I suppose we'll have to spend a minute talking about that. Um, is it just Mourinho got everything right? Klopp couldn't break him down. Is it as simple as that? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I don't think United played amazingly well. They just had a couple of decent chances and tucked them away. Um, yeah, I expected a little bit more from Liverpool, to be honest. Um, it just seemed a really open game. Uh, I expected it to be a bit more compact. But yeah, praise to Mourinho for that, I guess. He didn't, he didn't park the bus. He went for it and uh, got the win. What do you make of the um, Man United fans who got on Scott McTominay's back, uh, back for um, retaining possession? He, um, th- there was a ball he could have played forwards, apparently. Hmm. Uh, a bit of a dodgy one to Matic, but um, th- there was a, th- basically they were killing the game. And he didn't. He held on to it and he played it backwards. And Mourinho was going mental at the fans afterwards, saying, "You leave the kid alone. He did exactly what was needed. He had a really good game. Yeah. That's a very tough one. Uh, I think he's crap. <laughs> I don't think he's a good footballer at all. I really? think he just he just passes sideways and that's it. And you know, people think he's brilliant because Michael Claude Carrick Mac- made a career of it. I know it's, it looks Claude Makélélé got a, got a position named after it. You know, and mm. that's fine if that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. And, and fair play to you for uh, doing your part for the team and doing it. I have no problem with that at all. But it, I mean, he's not he's not a good footballer. He's not you know he's not Eric Cantona or, or Andrea Pirlo. He's just you know, he passed. He's he's Glenn Whelan. He's Glenn Whelan. That's what he is. <laughs> Glenn Whelan. <DVD. laughs> you know, Glenn Whelan gets an awful time from Irish fans because this is all he does. He just passes sideways or back. And sure, all right, you know, sometimes a, a team needs a player like that. So fine, if he's good at mm. that, he's good at that. Grant, but he's he's not. You know, the way people talk about him, come on, he's just. A, he's, he's not. The, he's not a wonder kid. That's for sure. Nah, come on, not at all. I mean. Give him time, maybe. Wait, wait, see what he does next season. Then we can judge. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm totally wrong. This my anti-Man United bias, but you know, whatever. He deserves it. <laughs> you know, uh, anything else from the weekend as that, that, that caught your eye uh, from Europe? Well, I was just going to say about the Huddersfield game. Uh, the Huddersfield Swansea game was a bit mental. I know it was nil nil, but I think Huddersfield got the second highest possession, eighty percent in the Premier League's ever seen. Um, nice. Somehow couldn't score against Swansea. They had like thirty shots. The Swansea, I think, were the only. I think only a couple of teams have never had a shot on target in a whole game. The Swansea were one of them. You know, Man. you know what that reminds me. Of? Do you remember when you used to play Football Manager, and and you'd have a game against some like crap team, and you could not score past them. The people <laughs> just save everything. Yeah, <laughs> that game. And I'm surprised that David Wagner didn't, you know, like hit the reset button and replay it. After the game. <laughs> You know, lads, you can, you can fall down rabbit holes on, on Reddit. There are uh, many uh, threads on uh, the FIFA uh, FIFA parts of Reddit saying that uh, scripting is, uh, or where they're trying to prove that there is scripting in the game, that you can have like 90% possession, 20 shots on target, but you still won't score a goal. <laughs> you know, and then you see videos of kids throwing their Xbox out the window, which I, I love. I, I just love those videos. <laughs> but, yeah, but, it's um, bad. Yeah, I mean, just like going over to Italy, 
Uh, sadly, it looks like no matter uh, blow it. Uh, 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 it was away. the same thing. It was the same thing. I was watching this one. It was. It was actually. It was only, it was only match I had time to watch all weekend. My mm. my folks are over and. Uh, yeah, Napoli were awful disappointing again. It was, it was exactly the same as against Roma. It's just they won't change their tactics. They won't. They, all they know how to do is bomb forward. You know, get the ball in the box, try and score. Ball in the box, score. And like against Inter, you know, Inter Inter invented Catanaccio. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and, yeah, it's it's a shame. It looks like Juventus are gonna are gonna get it now, which is disappointing. But sure. You know, yeah. it, it's it's all fault for not having a plan B. It's just like Brendan Rodgers Liverpool a few years ago. It's their own fault, and Steven Gerrard falling will never yeah. forgive. <laughs> um, fellas, Atten from the Champions League, you're looking forward to this weekend. We have um, uh, what have we got? We got uh, Roma, Shakhtar, Man United, Seville, then Besiktas, Bayern, and uh, the biggest one in Barca and Chelsea. Anything, uh, Atten, you're looking forward to? I'm just, I'm personally just looking forward to watching the uh, the Chelsea and United games. Um, I think Besiktas, Bayern Munich is done. Roma Shakhtar doesn't interest me, but it'd probably be a half decent game. But yeah, it'd be interesting to watch the Man U and Chelsea games for me. Uh, I'm not going to have a bet on either, to be honest. I'm just going to personally just watch it and enjoy it. Not interested in Chelsea Barcelona at all. Really? Wonder why. Wonder why. <laughs> um, Roma Shakhtar should be a very, very good game. Shakhtar, who are awesome at home, are crap mm. away. But uh, Roma's, Roma's um, Champions League record at home is not great. Should be goals. Besiktas is Bayern. Who cares? Besiktas yeah. don't care. They've, they've got a massive game in the league coming up this weekend. Who gives them monkeys, you know? Um, uh, Man U should do severe, I would think. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit pumped for a couple of other Champions League games. Go on. So, um, yeah, uh, if, you, if you read Pro Tips, obviously you'll see we have a betting news section today. I previewed uh, Jeju United against uh, Guangzhou Evergrande. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, Tianjin Quanjian versus... Oh, Christ, now I can't even bloody remember. Oh, your pronunciation was going to say... Uh, well, uh, well, yeah. Um, uh, Tia, Tianjin Quanjian versus John Buck, John Dai Motors. And nice. both, both really good games. Jeju um, against uh, Guangzhou. They played last week. Um, and Guangzhou um, went 2 0 down and came back and won 5 3. Oh, wow. um, they've scored 19 goals in like four games, and 16 of them have come from two Brazilians who aren't famous. Um, Jeju, in, the, the group's really, really tight. There's only like two points between top and bottom in the group, and it just promises to be an absolute goal fest. And then the other one is even worse for goals. Um, Tianjin are in their first ever Champions League. They were a second division side in China three years ago. Wow. And they're playing um, one of the best teams in Asia, John Bok Motors. Um, they took the lead in Korea, went down 6-3. And then, now they're playing the, ret- like the, the return half in the group stage. The game, it just promises goals. But the odds in the game are actually really high. So um, Guangzhou Evergrande, a 2.19 to win Jeju. Although Jeju have got like no real um, form at home, Guangzhou are on fire at the moment. Two point one nine just seems insane. It's not like they've even got to travel far. Um, Tianjin Kuangjian versus John Book Hyundai. Um, John Book are one point nine four. Again, Dan, again. Dan, man, when when are these matches on? What time? The uh, Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Okay. Wednesday afternoon. Nice. So I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm, I'm really interested in the Chinese Super League anyway. Um, yeah. I've, I've not actually been inside Guangzhou Evergrande Stadium, but I've been to where it is in Tianhe right. in Guangzhou. And it's huge. It's like all the stadiums there. They're massive. And um, China's going to be a superpower, I think, um, in the next, what, 20 years? Do you think yeah, so? I don't know. It... It always threatens to be, obviously, with the money that's involved. But I don't know if it'll ever get that big, will it? I think so, you know. I think so. Um, there's also a couple of famous names out there. So um, Tianjin have got two very famous, uh, Euro- um, well, European, former European-based uh, players. Mm. Let me get more words out. So one of them um, is the Belgian midfielder, Axel Witzel, oh, yeah. who was um, at uh, Zenit St. Petersburg. And then the other one is, a, um, I'll let you try and guess, former Chelsea player, Brazilian. Oscar. Oscar. Nope. 
Oh, Ramirez, Ramirez. Ramirez. Nope. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Balet. Oh, that's no, not Balet. It's too old. Um, uh, no, don't know. Okay, I'll, I'll add another clue. He only played twice for Chelsea. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's <laughs> an awful clue. <laughs> and he scored one goal. <laughs> no idea. Um, uh, his name means duck. Well, I would never have got that. Alexandra yeah. Pato. Oh, bloody hell. Ah, you only, only played for Chelsea twice? Yeah, he played for Chelsea twice on loan. Scored a penalty, as I recall. But he's, now in, he's now wrapped up in China. He's doing all right, actually. He's doing okay out there. Mm. Um, like a lot of these big Brazilian signings. Oscar, who you mentioned, he was actually um, in the news today saying uh, he doesn't care if he gets to the World Cup or not. He says, um, I don't want my family to be poor when I'm older. Yeah, that's is, pretty yeah. <laughs> you, you can't buy stuff with World Cup memories. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, fair enough. You know, he's being honest about it. He's on an absolute yeah, wedge. Exactly, exactly, exactly. He's, he's he's man enough to be honest about it, you know, and and fair play to him about that. I mean, it's crap. I mean, I mean, every every kid wants wants to play for his national team and in a World Cup. But I mean, but then, but I suppose he gets so much hassle from the Brazilian media and all that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? To hell with it. I'm just gonna give give them the two fingers and just like I meant it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to protipster.com for more details. That's good. Eh? Oh, sorry, lads. I want to bring you bring back one thing about the Man United uh, match. I had said to you the other day, Martin, about a website that I've been using. Uh, odds mats or something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, so I was watching it. I was watching the Man United match, and Man United were two point four when the odds opened, and a kick off they were three point two. Wow. Yeah. Now that's ridiculous. So I hope, and I put it out on Twitter. So I hope some people did back it because uh, I didn't back Man United to win. I did back them on the handicap. Uh, so like I backed against Liverpool for my shame, but I don't care. I won a tenner. Whatever. Uh, That's and, about uh, 50 beers in Poland. No, but um, yeah, it, I'll, 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 when the lads are talking, I'll, I'll put the link up in here because it's something that the people should watch out for, especially with like uh, odds, odds compilers like Pinnacle, because Pinnacle are so on, on, on the button with their odds. And if you watch how the odds move, then you can go with the market or go against the market. And you know yourself, lads, we've spoken about this many, many times the wisdom of the crowds. It's a complete fallacy. So mm-hmm. usually better to go against what the market thinks. Or, yeah, that's what I think anyway. Maybe I'm wrong. What do you think? No, I, I, I agree. I, 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 I always look out for odds that look um, slightly odd. Um, there's actually a really good one tomorrow night uh, in the championship. Brentford against Cardiff. Uh, Cardiff have won six on the banks. Mm. Are an absolute fire. And I got them at... Three points, three nine to beat Brentford tomorrow, wow. which seems nice. insanely high, and I can't work out why. I looked at Brentford's form. Okay, so they've won a couple of games, but they they, they won their last home game five nil against Birmingham City. Mm. To be fair, that Birmingham City team, West Ham under nines would have beaten five nil. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then their form is a bit. It, it, it looks it looks it looks better than it it should be because of the, they play crap teams. Cardiff have just been ripping teams apart. They, they score goals. I watched them this weekend, obviously, because we played them. They didn't get out of second gear. They, they took, took us for three goals and didn't, didn't get out of second gear. Yeah. And then the second half, they kind of slacked off a bit and we came back in and scored a couple. But I'm, um, I, I'm quite amazed that Cardiff are, are so highly priced. Wait, what, what, I, I can't figure out why. What's their record like at Brentford? Maybe that's got something to do with it. I don't know. I'm always sketchy about that sort of thing. I, uh, I know what. What are you going for here? So you're you're back in Cardiff. Yeah, Cardiff. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 no, no, this, this, this is exactly the same thing as Man United. Then they're, they're, Pinnacle had them three point three six to begin with. As of mm. now, three point six seven. So like straight away, you're, you know, you, <clears> you, yeah, uh, you're, the market are going against you. But yeah, you, yeah, I, I'd be on your side here, man. You know, mm. definitely, I'd be on your side. Well, yeah, just looking at there's an head. overreaction. It was like the, with the Man United one, it was a complete overreaction to uh, Paul Pogba not playing, and 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 people were thinking, oh, because Fellaini 
will play. That's mm. uh, that's a, that, 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 that's uh, that would be to Liverpool's advantage. But actually, you no. Know, if you think about it, now, uh, Fellaini, Man United have an extra kind of more defensive-minded midfielder, while Pogba just doesn't know what he's at in the middle of that uh, Man United midfield. So Fellaini would be more effective against a very attacking Liverpool team. Like I, I don't understand how people didn't realise that. Like Liverpool, Man United's jump was just I, I couldn't figure out why there was such an uh, overreaction. But I don't know. It's it's something that I, I definitely want to learn more about and watch more. Definitely, you know, pick some games and just watch the movement and, and learn more about them. You know. So for that, anyway, look, uh, we better get to some uh, uh, championship matches because you guys have some tips, lads. I'll just. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I've gone for Villa to beat QPR. They're a little bit short, mm. but I just think I, I just personally, <laughs> personally thought Villa are probably a little bit too, uh, too big. They're one point six seven. I expected them to probably be about one point six, one point five five. So a little bit of value there for me. I don't QPR rubbish. Um, so I expect Villa to win that quite comfortably. And in League One for me, I think Peterborough uh, starting to find a bit of form. Uh, under new manager Steve Evans. Uh, he won his first game, smashed Charlton at the weekend. They're playing Berry, who are absolutely terrible. Um, and they're 2 point, what are they, 2.6? So pretty decent odds away from home. They're a point off the playoffs. And uh, yeah, in a great run of form at the minute. And um, yeah, Berry are just woeful. So that price sticks out for me as well. Steve Evans um, was interesting. You, you know they have the manager of the month type things. Mm. He built for manager of the month last month for his old club. But he was nominated for it, it after he'd taken the Peter Bridge up. <laughs> Class. I didn't get it. It went to John Coleman at uh, Atkinson Stanley, if I remember rightly. But They're he, top now. Um, That's crazy. One, Atkinson. One of those, one of those anomalies. One of those weird anomalies. Yeah. Have you only tip, Dan? Um, just Cardiff. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the head to head now. So the um, the reverse fixture this fix uh, this this year, Cardiff beat them two now. Mm. Um, in the same fixture last season, it was two all. Um, Brentford won in April 2016, but Cardiff won in March 2015. Yeah, right. So it's it's not like it, they're a bogey side at all. Yeah, Cardiff yeah. beat them in the league uh, in League One in 2003. Uh, it's not like they're a bogey side or anything like that. I, I, I cannot figure out why it's so big. I mean, it's that big. If you were a scaredy cat, you could probably get. 1.6, 1.7, um, Asian handicap plus 0.5, mm. and you know, and, and, and add the draw to the equation. There's, I cannot see how Cardiff are not going to get points at Griffin Park. Brentford are not that good. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Cardiff, Cardiff have got everything to play for as well. They're only three points behind Wolves now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they can catch them. You know, all, all Wolves have to do is, is slip up once. Cardiff are going to catch them. Um, all right, lads, look, uh, I think we'll finish up then. Uh, was there any anything from the Europa League that you wanted to mention? Uh, I think uh, I think Salzburg, again, are too big um, against Dortmund. Just going by how, how well they played in Dortmund, you know, they're, for, for me, 2.18, uh, zero Asian handicaps, a draw no bet, I think it's pretty good, pretty good price for Salzburg. Um, right. So I'll be going for that. And as well, Arsenal as well, I think they're a little bit big, considering how well they did in Milan as well. They're gonna, Milan are going to go gung-ho, and Arsenal are more than capable of picking them off on a counter-attack. So they're a decent price for me as well. They're a wonderful team in Europe, aren't they, Arsenal? Weirdly so. <laughs> they're just lovely to watch in Europe. They're awful at home. They're like, they're like, the, they're like the anti-Brexit team of the Premier League, the opposite of Stoke. <laughs> Right, uh, and else, lads, before I wrap up, uh, Cheltenham is this weekend, is this week, I should say. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. Yeah, yep. uh, look, I, um, horses are basically for pulling ploughs where I'm from. No, that's not true. You know, all the best horses who win in Cheltenham, they're always Irish. I'm from Ireland, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, <it's such> <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I haven't been looking. Is there, do you know any horses that are in form? Um, apparently, it's going to be very heavy ground. Um, really, really heavy ground. So look at horses that are good in heavy ground and yeah. are won on longer distances than the race to Cheltenham because it's going to finish going uphill. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. I, I've got a treble for tomorrow. It won't win, I guarantee, because um, if it does... Uh... <laughs> you quit your job. <laughs> no, it's not quite that big. I, th- I think I got 1,400 to one uh, in a treble. Oh, wow. um, First flow in the 130, uh, Yada Enki in the 250, Wicklow Brave in the 330. Um, each way treble, 
1,420 something to one. Wow. Nice. So if that comes in, drinks on me. A good man, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Have you some paddies there with you? <laughs> uh, do you want Martin to just? Uh, no, I'll have a I'll have a look in the morning. I always like to have a look in the morning and see what the, the going's like. But Native River, River, I looked at in the Gold Cup on Friday. But uh, I'll have a look properly in the morning. I'll have a few I, pennies. That's for the sure. thing with the thing with Cheltenham is uh, it, it it's more of um more of a festival. Just have a little bit of fun I and mean, a little yeah, bit of flutter, yeah. especially with the weather as being as it is and the, the grain being as heavy as it is. Just look for big prices. Go each way. So if it, it places, you get uh, money back. And, you know, like all the three horses I picked are at least 12s. Yeah. At least 12 to 1. So, you know. Yeah. It, I've, got a, I've got a quick funny story. When I, where, a place where I used to work, Paddy Power Betfair, um, I used to be on the horse racing team for like a year or so. Um, and one of the guys next to me was managing one of the massive Cheltenham races a few years ago. And he accidentally uh, tipped it in play at the wrong time and it absolutely ruined it and cost the company about, about a million oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he got, uh, got sent out of the door after that he <laughs> <laughs> wasn't concentrating but well, he tipped the winner what oh no he tipped it in play so he, he put the market in play on the exchange when it shouldn't have been in play ruined everyone's bets that were already in place and stuff so completely oh. ruined the market 11 million quid Oh, and traders, lads on who lads, the lads who live on Bedford, they'd be like that, fuming. See something like, oh my god, right, yeah. right. So on that uh, happy note, we we all love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's losing money. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been another uh, great episode of the Pro Tips for Sports Betting podcast. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Martin. We'll be back on Thursday, everyone, where we'll be looking ahead to uh, next weekend's football and we'll have some uh, other sports teams as well. All right, so goodbye, everyone. Take it easy. easy. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are protipsterglobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, protipsteren or Pro Tips are IRL. Bye.